Hello. Uh, today we're going to be talking about LINK, which stands for Language Integrated Query. Um, let's go ahead and uh, start. So the first thing we're going to do is create an array of strings. Um, string, and we'll just call this names. Oh wait, a string array. Names equals... Um, let's go ahead and add some names in. Um, so, and we'll add one last one here. Okay, should do it. Now, um, the, this data source could have come from anywhere. Um, when you're using Link, you know, it doesn't really matter where it's coming from. Let's say it came from Entity Framework Model, or it came from an ADO Net, say, Data Reader, um, uh, XML, Link uh, to Dataset, say, a Link to SQL. There are a number of ways in which we could have gotten this data, but let's just use this for now. Um, let's see. Uh, the first thing I wanted to point out was, um, let's take a look at uh, name, names. Dot. Let's see what IntelliSense says we have available to us here. We have quite a few different operators. Um, there's, there's a lot here, and many of these are being added by the using uh, system.link statement here. This namespace is adding in a lot of these, and I can show you. Let's go ahead and comment that out. And we'll take a look, and you'll see that there are there are um, only a few now available to us. Um, so uh, let's let me show you that, and they're all back now. So it's the um, system dot link namespace, which pulls in all of the extension methods that support link and allow us to operate on these uh, innumerable collections. And one thing I wanted to show you is that sometimes it's uh, not clear what data type you're going to be getting back. So by using a var, you can then interrogate the data type that's returned from your link query and, and uh, determine what it was. And I'll show you how that might change. So um, what we're going to be talking about uh, today are called uh, comprehension type queries. And um, let's just say results equals. Now here, the first thing we're going to define is the source. And if you've used SQL, you'll probably um, think this is kind of backward uh, by putting the source up front. We're going to say from. But what this allows us to do is, uh, for one thing, it allows IntelliSense to tell us what operators we have because it knows the source. So uh, from, now, uh, once we choose from, then we're going to choose a variable name. This can be any name. We'll just call it name in this case. Name in names. Okay. And um, then we're going to just go ahead and do an order by um, name. And then our select comes at the end. Um, and we're going to go ahead and select name. Order by name, select name. OK. Now, um, we'll just go ahead and write these out. Um, name in name in results, sorry, results, and then we'll just write it out to the console. Uh, write line and uh, name. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Um, okay, so here we have all five of our names being written out. Okay. Um, some of the things we can do, we can add in a where clause, so we can say where name. Um, let's say we do starts with, and let's just say we want to return all of the names that start with D, so we should get back Dan and Doug here. So let's go ahead and run that. So there we go. We can do the, um, we can do our where clause right in here. Um, let's try something else. We can say name.length. Uh, we'll do a modulus uh, to not equal to zero. So what we're doing here is we're going to choose all of the names that have a 
an odd length to them. Um, let's go ahead and run that. And we get back Chris, Dan, and Harry. Now, um, when you look at this, it's not intuitively obvious what's going on here. You might, you know, pretty quickly figure it out. But ideally, we would rather um, have a nice, um, we'd rather encapsulate that logic uh, into a separate class, a method, and have a descriptive name that we could use that would tell us immediately what's going on. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll create a class. And I think I'll just call this string extensions. Um, okay, and let's add that. And then we're going to say public. Uh, we're going to make this class public. Um, public and um, static. And then it's going to return a bool. And we'll call it has odd length. And we'll pass in a string. And we'll call it source. And then we'll simply return uh, source.length. We'll do modulus again. Um, 2 is not equal to 0. Return that. OK. So now. We've got our has, so we can simplify this by saying um, system extension, uh, string extensions. Okay, we've got that, and it knows about the method has odd length, and we pass name. So this will work. Go ahead and run it to make sure. Yeah, and it works. We, we have our three odd length names. But it's not ideal. Um, it's a little verbose. We've had to use this name of this extension class. Ideally, we'd like to actually add this as a method, has odd length, to the, to the string class. But as you know, uh, system uh, classes like string are sealed. And um, so let's talk about a way in which we could do that, though. Um, this is called uh, uh, extension methods and what we'll do is we'll go back to our extension uh, to our string extensions here and we'll simply add the keyword this and that uh, keyword this is going to turn this into an extension method and we're going to be able to extend the string class adding the has odd length method to it so this is a really powerful new uh, feature let's see let's go back and um, change this now so we can simply say name dot, and you'll see IntelliSense um, doesn't have it. Is that because I need to build? Let's see. Let me try building. Oh, OK. I need to make it a static class. My fault there. Static, OK. There we go. Now we should be all set. So now let's say name dot has, there we go, has odd length. So this is uh, much better. Oops, we don't want the semicolon. We'll go ahead and run it. And uh, returns the same qu uh, query set, result set. Um, so that's, uh, that's extension method. That's an extension method. Um, what else? Um, another thing we can do here is we don't necessarily have to do the where right there. We can go ahead and further uh, operate on this. Um, let's see. Uh, we want to say results equals results dot. And um, where? We can add our where in here. And we can say and then here's where we can have our has odd length. And um, one issue we have here is that this is going to return a non-ordered list. And we've already um, established results as an ordered list. So what we're going to have to do to fix that is we're going to have to order by, let's just throw this in, um, and we'll say names.
Yeah, so let's go ahead and run that, and we'll essentially be ordering by the odd length names. So that's another thing we can do. Now I want to show you one last thing before we end here. Um, I want to show the deferred execution. Let's go ahead and break right here and run this. Okay, now I'm going to step through this. You'll see it goes to results, it goes to in, and so what I want to show is that the uh, this query is not actually run until we need data. Um, when I hit enter here, um, it'll run the link query. You'll see it'll jump up and run the link query. This is called deferred execution. See there, we're now up in the link query also known as lazy loading. Um, so it, it doesn't run the query until it actually needs the data. And so then we're going through. So let's run the query. And let me just continue. There we go. So that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.